Good morning, students. Today we are going to discuss the characters in the play The Tempest. Let's discuss the objectives first, children. By the end of this session, you will be able to understand the wickedness and shrewdness of Caliban. You will be able to understand the sweet and dutiful nature of Ariel. And children, you will also be able to understand the villainy of Antonio. Now children, let's discuss the very first character that is Ariel. Ariel, a spirit of the air, is light-hearted and cheerful. Though a spirit of the air, he is equally at home on earth, on sea and in fire. He can fly, swim and penetrate the earth. Penetrate means to pierce. So children, this Ariel, he is a spirit of air. He is a cheerful spirit and this spirit, though he is a... Uh, air spirit, a spirit of air, he is equally, we can find him equally on earth and uh, on sea and in fire also. The spirit can fly, swim and even the spirit can pierce the earth. He can work both by day and by night. Unlike most spirits, he feels sympathetic towards human beings in their misery. So children, this Ariel, this Ariel can work day and night. And unlike other spirits, this spirit, Ariel, feels sympathetic towards human beings in their misery, in their sad times, in their bad times. This spirit feels sympathetic towards human beings. After seeing King Alonso and others in great distress, he reports their condition to Prospero in words that are touched with sympathy. So when Ariel sees King Alonso and others in a great distress, then this spirit goes to Prospero and he tells and rates everything to Prospero about their condition and the words in which he, sp he speaks to Prospero are touched with sympathy. He had remained imprisoned for 12 years in a pine tree where he had been confined. Confined means arrested by Sikorex. So children, this spirit, this spirit was confined in a pine tree for 12 years by Sikorex. And then later on, the spirit was set free by Prospero. Now see children, see in your workbooks, the first point under character sketch of Ariel is his, his love of freedom. Ariel wants freedom from all control. When we first see him, he is in melancholy, means depression, and moody, means gloomy, because Prospero is setting him tasks. So children, Ariel wants freedom from all the control. When we first see him, he is in melancholy, he is in depression, and he is moody, means he is in gloomy state, because Prospero is setting, Prospero is giving him tasks. Prospero repeats his promise of freedom to Ariel several times in the course of play. So children will find that Prospero, he repeats his promise of freedom to Ariel. He repeats number of times his promise of freedom to Ariel. And Ariel also reminds him of the same promise twice. Now children see the next point here is his sense of duty. Although Ariel loves freedom, he performs the duties imposed on him. He is proud of the manner in which he is able to carry out Prospero's commands. So children, we will find that although Ariel loves freedom, yet he performs his duties very well. He is very proud the way he carries out Prospero's commands. He doesn't shrink from work. Shrink from means avoid. He doesn't avoid work and frequently reminds Prospero of his usefulness. On one occasion, we will find him saying to Prospero, that remember I have done the worthy service means he has done worthy services for him. His desire for praise is seen again when after defeating the plot against Alonso's life he says to himself Prospero my lord should know what I have done. So children he desires for praise a lot and this can be seen when he has defeated uh, the plot of uh, the plot against Alonso's life when Sebastian and Antonio were about to kill King Alonso. We'll find then when he defeats that plot, he says to himself that he, his master Prospero should know that what he has done. Prospero from his side gives him ungrudging means without envy, praise, frequently using words of encouragement and endearment. Endearment means affection. So on the other hand, we'll find Prospero praises him a lot and he'll uh, frequently we'll find him using the words of uh, Endearment means affection and encouragement. He frequently uses words of encouragement and endearment for Ariel.
He calls him my brave spirit, fine apparition, my quaint aerial, my tricksy spirit. These are some of the phrases with which Prospero acknowledges the service of Ariel. Now, children, see the next point is his love for Prospero. Ariel is bound to Prospero by a feeling of gratitude and he loves Prospero so far as love for any human being can enter into his being. So children, he is bound by Prospero by the feeling of thankfulness, by the feeling of gratitude because Prospero has saved his life and he loves Prospero a lot. He loves as much as a spirit like him can love a human being. He is on terms of great affection with his master. Barring. Barring means accepting. Barring one occasion, he shows impatience with Prospero for setting him so many tasks and postponing his liberation. He shows a devotion to Prospero that is rarely found in spirits. So except in one occasion when he was uh, impatient uh, with Prospero for giving him so many tasks and for postponing his freedom, he yet he shows a devotion to Prospero uh, that is actually uh, is not found in any of the spirits spirit of mischief mischief means playfulness his playful nature is shown by the zest zest means enthusiasm with which he performs those duties which enable him to use his powers on stefano and trinculo so children his playful nature is shown by the way with which he performs his duties and uh, it enables him to use his powers against stefano and trinculo the scene which he shows a discord means dispute among caliban stefano and trinculo is full of childish foolery so he is actually a spirit of mischief as the scene in which we'll see the dispute among caliban stefano and trinculo is because of him only as he uses his powers on them and this makes the scene very funny Later, he gives an account of it to Prospero in a manner that shows that he enjoyed the fun of it all. So later, we'll find him narrating all the uh, experience to Prospero and uh, telling him that he enjoyed it very much. Ariel's conduct towards Trinculo makes Stefano complain to Caliban. So the way Ariel treated Trinculo, it makes Stefano uh, complain to Caliban. He says to Caliban, monster, your fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than played the jack with us. So he says to Caliban that monster, your fairy, whom you call is harmless, has made them fool. Now see, next one is children, Ariel's music. This music of Ariel works irresistibly means impossible to resist on those who hear it so the ones who hear ariel's music ariel's music works on them irresistibly means they cannot resist it his music diminishes the fury means anger and passion of the waves so the music of ariel can diminish the fury and passion of the waves it lures means attracts Ferdinand towards Prospero cell. So because of Ariel's music only, Ferdinand's attracted toward Prospero cell because of Ariel's music. It awakens Gonzalo at that time when Sebastian and Antonio are about to murder King Alonso. So we'll find Gonzalo awakes because of Ariel's music when Sebastian and Antonio were about to kill King Alonso. It speaks through the elements. We'll find the elements speaking to Alonso. And because of that, it arises, it arises the repentance in his heart. He regrets what he has done. Now, children, this was all about the character of Ariel. And now we are going to read about the next spirit, that is Caliban. Caliban, spirit of earth. Let's talk about his appearance first. Caliban is the son of the witch Sycorax. So children, Caliban is son of the witch named Sycorax. In his outward appearance, he has some resemblance to a fish which Trinculo takes him to be. So children, this Caliban seems to look like a fish and Trinculo, he also thinks that he's a fish. He's a half monster actually and half human. He's of an evil nature. He has evil nature, children, and is engaged in wicked projects and uses abusive language. So he is actually uh, the cruel spirit. He, has, he always performs the wicked projects and he uses abusive language always. 
he is said to be as disproportioned in his manners as in his shapes shape so children he is said to be that he doesn't have proper manners as he doesn't have a proper shape that is why he is referred to as misshapen knave so he is a uh, referred to as misshapen knave knave means beast he is contemptuously means expressing a deep hatred addressed by prospero as thou earth and thou tortoise so children will find uh, uh, prospero and dressing him contemptuously uh, by calling him thou earth and thou tortoise now see the next point children his wickedness his name is an anagram means a word made by transposing the letters of another word so his name is an anagram of cannibal so children anagram actually means when we rearrange the words and that leads to another word so his name is an anagram of cannibal in other words if we rearrange the letters of his name we get the word cannibal so when we we'll rearrange the word the his name caliban we'll get the word cannibal cannibal means animal that feeds on the flesh of his own species and indeed he is savage means wild and brutal means cruel like cannibal so children he is actually like uh, the beast he is like he is cruel and he is wild like cannibal his earthy nature presents a sharp contrast to the celestial means heavenly nature of ariel so he has earthy nature so like cruel nature and his earthy nature is contrast to the heavenly nature of ariel Caliban is gross means deficient in knowledge he lacks knowledge and beastly and he's cruel he has beast like characters he resists all the active active occupation and recognizes no moral law so he actually he is an evil spirit he uh, whatever he did was morally wrong and he always resists doing any occupation or job given to him he is regarded as an unconscious anticipation of the evolutionary missing link because he represents mankind at the brute stage so children he can be considered as the missing link between higher primates such as monkeys or apes and human beings or in simple words we can say that he falls somewhere in between the monkeys and human beings in the evolution of species his mind has rightly been compared to a dark cave into which the light of knowledge neither illuminates nor warms it illuminates means brighten so children his his mind has been compared to a dark cave into which the light of knowledge can neither uh, brighten it nor warm it but only serves to put into motion poisonous vapors but only brings out the poisonous vapors see the next point is his his cowardice caliban is not moved by kindness so children he is not touched by kindness only brutal torment means torture can subdue him subdue means bring him under control so children only uh, when he is treated cruelly when he is tormented then only one can control him he clings to prospero's feet and trembles with fear when he thinks prospero's tormenting spirits so children whenever he thinks of prospero's tormenting spirits he clings to prospero's feet and he trembles with fear rather he is revengeful and would like to murder his master he is a revengeful spirit and he would like to murder his master prospero but he prefers to do it with his uh, through the drunken sailors the manner in which he hatches the plot means to make an illegal or harmful plan to kill prospero in his sleep is clearly indicative of his cowardice means he is he is coward as he hatches a plot he makes a plot makes a plan of killing prospero in his sleep and this shows actually that he is coward his repentance and promise to reform means to change when his plot is exposed are a product of his cowardly nature because he can never change means uh, it is known that he can never change so uh, he regrets and he promises that he will reform he will change himself but this actually shows his cowardly nature as everyone knows that he cannot be that he cannot change himself Next point is his shrewdness and common sense. In the execution of his plan to murder Prospero, he shows 
much shrewdness means the quality of showing power of judgment and common sense the time when he was about to execute his plan uh, to murder prospero he shows the shrewdness his shrewdness and common sense he gives sensible advice to his fellow conspirators so we'll find him advising his conspirators he urges them to first seize prospero's books asking them further to walk softly so that prospero may not hear the sound of their footstep so we'll find him asking his conspirators to first of all they should grasp prospero's book and later on they should uh, walk softly so that he would not hear their footsteps next point is his uh, he is observant caliban has a complete knowledge of the island so children he has a complete knowledge of that island he knows all the qualities of the island he knows uh, where he can find where he can get the fresh water brine pits brine means salty water where he can get the salty water the barren and fertile places he knows uh, the places which are barren and which are fertile with his long nails he can dig up pig nuts pig nuts other name of peanuts so with his with his long nails he can even dig pig nuts he promises to feno to show him jay's nest and to teach him how to catch the nimble monkeys so he promises to feno that one day he would show him jay's nest a bird's nest and he would also surely teach him how to catch nimble monkeys he can also get seagulls from the rocks he can get seagulls means a kind of a bird from the rock prospero has taught him to make dams for the fish so prospero he teaches him he has already uh, taught him how to catch fishes uh, to wash dishes and to keep his cell clean now see the next one is the rude eloquence of his speech he has been taught the human language by prospero but his speech mainly reflects his earthy nature so children caliban has been taught human language by prospero but the way he speaks his speech always reflects his earthy nature always reflects his cruel nature this is how he curses prospero and miranda to be affected by now see how he curses prospero and miranda he says all the infections that the sun sucks up from bogs fens and flats he'll say all such infections may fall on prospero and miranda this kind of language has become a regular habit with him so this kind of language was his regular habit he called on toads beetles bats hedgehogs adders and moles in his in his curses so he usually calls all these beetles bats hedgehogs in his curses now children let's discuss the next character that is antonio the villain of the play Antonio is the brother of Prospero the Duke of Milan. So children Antonio he is the brother of Prospero who was the Duke of Milan. Having been entrusted with the work of administering the country he employs all kinds of unfair means for the attainment of his objective of becoming the duke. So children in order to become the Duke of Milan he uses all the unfair means so as he was given the responsibility of looking after the country of managing his country by his brother prospero but as but what he did he employs all the unfair means for the attainment of his objective of becoming the duke he causes his brother prospero to be banished means expelled but he even tries to bring about the death of both prospero and his infant daughter miranda children what he did he banished he expelled his brother prospero from the country he even tries children to kill both prospero and his infant daughter miranda he seeks the support of prospero's worst enemy alonso to whom he agrees to pay a certain sum of money every year so children he was supported by prospero's enemy that is alonso he was supported by alonso who was prospero's worst enemy so whom he agrees that he will pay him certain sum of money every year in dealing with sebastian he uses flattery means he praises him appeals to the latter's ambition so children he uh, flatters sebastian and appeals to his veiled ambition of becoming the king of naples when sebastian asks him whether conscience means person's moral sense of wrong or right whether conscience doesn't make him uneasy he says that there is no such thing as conscience so children when sebastian asked him about his conscience so he said that he says that there is no such thing as conscience conscience he says should not stand between a man and his ambition so he says that conscience should not become an obstacle between a man and his ambition 
a scoffer. Antonio is a scoffer. Being devoid of human feelings, Antonio joins Sebastian in mocking at Brunzello when the latter tries to console Alonso in his grief. So children, Antonio joins Sebastian in mocking when Gonzalo, at Gonzalo when he was trying to console Alonso in his grief. The mockery in which he indulges is a kind of a screen for his crafty design. So children, the mockery in which he is involved, in which this Antonio is involved, it is actually a kind of a screen which is hiding his crafty plans. He would take advantage of the king's grief. Speaking to Sebastian, he says, I am right glad that he is out of hope. Do not, for one repulse, forego the purpose that you resolved to effect. So children here, when he was talking to Sebastian, he says that he is very happy that King Alonso is hopeless. He says to him that he should not worry for the one for failure. He says that he should be resolved to fulfill his ambition. When several strange shapes appear bringing delicious dishes at a banquet, Antonio indulges in loose talks. When Ariel denounces means to announce threateningly the three culprits, Antonio is not affected by remorse, means a sense of guilt for past wrongs, as Alonso is. On the contrary, he persists in an attitude of self-defense. So children, when Ariel denounces, uh, when he threateningly announces the three culprits, Antonio is not at all affected by it. He is not in any guilt, whereas Alonso is. And on the contrary, uh, he stubbornly uh, uh, show, showed his attitude of self-defense. So children, this was all about today's session. We have done three characters. And today's homework is revise all these three characters. Thank you so much, children.